that's just how I looked at it. And a lot of people have been like, here's the thing. Like, we actually, yes, I get it. Like, the ending wasn't like, you know, Cinderella story, and it wasn't like as fun and kind of like tainted it because like the refs never threw a flag the whole game, which is whatever they did. But my thing is, is we actually had a good Super Bowl with a satisfying winner, no matter what, it would have been a satisfying winner. We had guys like Matt Stafford, Jalen Ramsey, Odo Beckham Jr., Andrew Whitworth, Aaron Donald, all get their first ring. Fantastic. Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, deserving. They all guys that, yeah, they're winners. They should get a ring. We're happy for them. Joe Burrow has this story now of like getting so close as a young guy, but now he gets to chase it for the rest of his career. I think that's a good narrative and good story we have that revenge type thing. But, and we had a good halftime show um, commercials and half and like the intermissions weren't too long. I felt, I felt like a breeze through and got straight to the game and the game was fun. And here we all are because it's our nature to be like, Oh, this is shitty because we've had such shitty super bowls in like the past, like 10 years, there's been lots of them that have been like duds uh, that we just want to pick apart everything. You know what? It was good. Not great. It was good. Just enjoy it. Like that's, that's a good thing that we had a good Super Bowl. Yeah, no, I'm not happy with, you know, some of the things, but overall it was good. I mean, I can't, you can't be mad. Like you said, you know, Stafford getting a ring. Uh, I mean, that's, that made my heart, you know, fill with joy. Yeah. I mean, it was basically, he was either cheering for Matt Stafford or cheering for Joe Burrow. Yeah, so uh, I don't think it could be, I, yeah, I don't think the outcome would have been, uh, the outcome going either way wasn't a bad thing. I mean, um, just hope unless Joe Burrow had, don't turn, in, turn into Marino. Unless you had money on the game, I don't see <laughs> any I way. What you probably am, but I don't see any way how people should be like mad at it. You know what I mean? Like, like unless you lost money, shouldn't really be mad. Um, I don't really care about all the missed calls. I don't care. It was a good game. I had fun. I enjoyed it all, uh, and I don't want anybody taking down my good time, my good vibes with that. But anyways. Welcome on back to Second and Short and the Fantasy Football and Dynasty Football podcast. I took a week off. It was Super Bowl week. Very weird for us to take a week off during the Super Bowl, but I decided, you know what? Let's just rest. Let's enjoy this instead of trying to cram in this stuff. And I get it. A lot of other people are like, let's just shove content down your throat. I just wanted to sit back and relax. I really just wanted to enjoy Super Bowl week. Took everything in. I didn't make a TikTok. I didn't make a tweet. I just enjoyed the sports world for potentially the last time before I enter into the professional world since my degree is, you know, here and everything, and now I'm job looking. Um, but with all that being said, we're going to jump right back into our buy, keep, and trade segments that we're going on. This is edition number five, where we're going to be talking about the NFC South. And what we ended up finding out, that this is a very teeter-totter um, division. It's very easy for some categories and very difficult for other categories. And it's just, it's so top heavy with talent, but with the uncertainty around almost every team's quarterback, even Atlanta, it's still, there's still some con con you know, concerns there. We're going to try and break this down. Now, I am your host, Tyler Lauder, joined with Jason, our fantasy expert on the coast. Sorry, I'm kind of taking up this whole intro. Let's go in and let's jump right in. And we're going to, since I've been talking so much, you're going to lead us off with the Buccaneers. That's the way we're going. And you're going to give us a guy that you're going to go out and you're going to buy this offseason. In the next three months, you're going to go out and buy this guy. I'm, I'm going to buy Mike Evans. Um, a lot of people sleep on him. He's a thousand yard receiver every year. Every year. Um, and he's had some shitty quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he's got to play with Brady recently. So that boosts all of the talent up. But yeah, people sleep on Mike Evans and they're not giving him the due that he deserves. And he gets overshadowed and everything. But he's a constant wide receiver that you can go out and you can get. People, like I said, people are sleeping on him. You're going to not have, like, outrageous value for him. But, you're, I mean, you're going to pay what you pay, I feel. So you're going to pay fair market value for him, but you're going to get a really good contributing wide receiver that's going to produce and has produced since he's came into the league. Yeah, we're looking at a guy that, uh, like you said, uh, he's been in the NFL. I don't even know what this is. 40, eight years, uh, eight years, and that's eight thousand yard seasons. Um, on top of that, he's had four seasons with double digit touchdowns. Um, and if you count that, he's had six seasons with eight or more touchdowns. 
almost every season he's eclipsed 70 plus yards except for two of them where he eclipsed uh, he had 67 and 68 so pretty much 67 plus catches a year is what you're looking at you're looking at a thousand yards you're looking at probably about eight touchdowns a year that's consistent wide receiver two borderline wide receiver one numbers that especially with the quarterback transition that we have right now is not going to cost you anything yeah that's going to be a selling point because you could say well you know you can unload him the the quarterback you know uncertainty you know he's not going to put up the numbers you know you could spin that to your advantage if you can buy him right now for uh, a a late first i say you go and do it i, I don't even it's not even hesitation for me you go out and you you buy him for a late first simple as that he's missed like four or five games in his career in eight years and no matter who who's his quarterback i think he's gonna put up a thousand yards receiving again i mean that streak's obviously gonna come to an end eventually but if he's gonna downgrade a little bit he's gonna downgrade to like 65 catches 900 yards and five touchdowns that's still a reliable wide receiver two numbers now let's move on to the guy that we should keep we're gonna stay in the wide receiver realm we're gonna talk about chris godwin i I tore his acl um, however, guys recover fantastically these days from their ACL injury, and I'm not really worried. And here's the biggest kicker on him. Chris Godwin, at the end of this month, will be turning 26. That's it. That means he has a whole season he'll be 26 before he even hits that 27 mark, and then he hits that prime wide receiver years from 27 to 31. So we're looking at a guy that you can get another four to five years out of that also had 1,000 yards receiving. Um, let's let's look at this thing. He played 14 games, 98 receptions, 1,100 yards, five touchdowns. Again, that is with Tom Brady, but his career has past four years, which includes Jameis Winston. He's got 800 yards, 13, 800 yards, 11. So I'm not worried. Even if he misses a couple games next year, he's a guy that I think has an opportunity to continue to be this like wide receiver one to two range, that like 10 to 13 range. And I think that here's the thing: people aren't going to want to if you try and buy him, I think it'll be very affordable as well. Same with Mike Evans. I think they're in the same price range. But if you tried to trade him, people are going to use that ACL injury against you. And I don't think that you're going to get peak value for him. So that's what makes him a keep for me. And just trust, no matter where he goes, no matter who's his quarterback, this is a guy that has wide receiver two floor. Yeah, and, you know, if he says, uh, you know, being in Tampa, you know, this goes back to the Mike Evans. They play off of each other, having the two, having two potential wide receiver ones help each other and help each other's stat. Now, leaving Tampa Bay, you know, there are some landing spots where he could definitely step into a, a wide receiver one role with decent quarterbacks. And here's the thing about this too is like I, I think wherever he's gonna go is gonna have a, a stable quarterback situation. I know he wants money, but like he's not demanding the biggest of bags, but it's coming off an ACL injury. So he's not going to be able to demand too much money. He might take like a one year prove it deal somewhere. Uh, but what I really see him doing is he's going to probably find somewhere that he has a good connection with the quarterback. Uh, not necessarily like a great quarterback, like Jameis Winston type thing where it's a gunslinger, the offense is pass heavy, that type of offense he's going to fall into. And I think even if he stays with Tampa Bay for a year, it doesn't matter who's starting at quarterback. That's going to be a desirable destination for a lot of quarterbacks anyways. Now let's move on to a guy that you, you just want to trade. Now uh, he's had a little resurgence since his late, uh, late 2020 into the playoffs. And now through 2021, running back Leonard Fournette has been pretty good. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's a good time to cash in um, and try to get some value out of him because he, we talk about that shelf life quite often. Mm-hmm. And this is where, you know, you're right at the edge of the cliff where that value is going to drop. Uh, so he, here's a guy that, you know, start shopping around. You may not make an off-season deal for him, but the first three weeks of the season, he's going to have a good game. Um, and that's that's where you want to move him because you're going to see uh, running back needy teams. There's not a real great, glaring, strong running back class this mm-hmm. year. Uh, so people's going to be looking for running back value and i think bryce hall, it's, bryce yeah. hall says otherwise but go ahead well one one out of what you're going you know everybody's going to be jockeying for that one one after that it's a it falls off 
that's what I'm saying. It's not a deep running back class this year where you're going to find, you know, players to get late in the later first round. The quarterbacks and wide receivers are pretty much what you're looking for in this draft class yeah. when it comes to your fantasy, uh, your rookie fantasy draft, not running backs. So you're, you're going to get that value to get a, a late first, early second. I uh, wouldn't go anything below 2-2. Two, two. Um, if that, and that's in a package deal. I think Leonard Fournette is the perfect type of guy to use. Coming off of a, a running back six in PPR format, just based on what I'm looking at, um, he had over 1,200 total yards. He had 10 total touchdowns. Um, you know, he had over 200 total touches, like 250 total touches. Uh, he's the type of guy that I think you can use, like if you were a contender this year and you have him, to package like your late first and him to move up into the draft. is the type of guy that you should, the type of thing you should be looking at. For a team that is like uh, middle of the road, maybe you can move up into that one four range. Uh, m- maybe somebody owns the one three in a non super flex league, and you know, what I mean, something like that where you can move up, or if you can just trade him straight up for you know one ten. Uh, I wouldn't be mad against that either. Uh, I, I do think he is a guy that we're hitting running backs hit a certain peak, and he just turned twenty seven, so we're at that that range right now where I think his value is going to be almost at its max that it ever will be again. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and I think his age is going to get used against him every year after this. So this is the off season to get rid of him, uh, especially if you can get a first round pick. And if you can get a 2023 first, I think a random 2023 first is better than Leonard Fournette right now. Now let's move on to the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, we're going alphabetically based on team attacking name, their power name. So the Falcons come up next. And we're going to talk about a team that is very difficult to judge because here's the thing. Uh, like, could you go out and buy Matt Ryan? Sure. You probably could. In a, in a super flex league, he's probably one of the more obtainable quarterbacks you can actually buy from a team. In a single quarterback league, you, I wouldn't really need him or touch him. Hopefully your quarterback is better than, than Matt Ryan. I don't really see how this offense is going to continue to move up or like get better like with another year of him getting older. He didn't really, you know, do much. So we're just going to talk about all the pass catchers that he has at his disposal. So a guy I'm going to try and buy is the current wide receiver one, technically, Kyle Pitts, but um, is Russell Gage. Now, Russell Gage is a guy that I think that, pending what the Atlanta Falcons do at the wide receiver position, could come back as their number one, at worst, number two. And he's going to benefit from the amount of targets that are going to be available. If Calvin Ridley is gone, then I just see in a situation where all those abandoned targets are going to kind of go to Gage and Pitts. And with that being said, I think he is a very obtainable guy that has wide receiver four or wide receiver three upside. And I think that if you can get a guy that can finish his wide receiver 36, that doesn't sound fantastic, but you could probably get him for like a late second. And you could turn around and you could have a guy that is flexible half the weeks of the year and is going to have that big uh, potential for you. He finishes wide receiver 38 this year. We have to remember that's with Calvin Ridley like going out. He had 66 receptions, 770 yards, uh, and four touchdowns. Now, if he would have been able to spread this out throughout the whole season as the number one, I bet he would have eclipsed over 1,000 yards, probably about 80 to 90 receptions with how much they throw in this offense. Yeah, and I think it's a good target in this situation because – you're going to see a pass, uh, a change of the guard. Matt Ryan is is waning, but he did produce when when uh, caught upon. Yeah. So you you're looking for that buy low with the with the hopes of getting a good return, a uh, good solid flex option, uh, and a and a streaming matchup option. Yeah. Now let's move on to a guy that you're going to keep. And I think the reason you're going to keep him is because he's too valuable. Let's talk about tight end Kyle Pitts. Yeah. And I'm eating crow on this because I was not a Pitts fan, uh, not. but I was not. I, 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 but he did slide in that uh, Julio Jones, lots of yards, no touchdowns. But um, this is somebody that I think is, is a generational talent. Uh, I wasn't really, I watched you know, highlight reels, you know, heard the hype. And sometimes the hype, in my opinion, people overhype uh, players. 
I don't think he was hyped up enough based on the production we got out of year one. No, no. Um, he definitely eclipsed all the hype that had him. He's a generational player. He's got that big body. He's got uncanny speed, especially in the matchups he's drawing against linebackers that he is just flat out abusing. Yeah. So, yeah, I think if you have him on your team, this is somebody that you've got to hold on to unless the only reason <clears throat> I would get rid of him is if you're in a major rebuild and this is your only asset. Yes, in that sense, because he will get you so much. Um, my fantasy league, I think I looked at this a couple of weeks ago, uh, like two, three weeks ago, and he was already in the top 12 of startup drafts ADP. Just based upon his, I mean, think about this. He finishes tight end six with one touchdown. One. That's insane. People demand and crave high profile tight ends of fantasy football because they're so hard to come by and so hard to get. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get something that is gonna benefit the package or like the, the value that he's gonna give you week in and week out for the next, if you have a good league, the next 13, 14 years. You're set. Don't even look at another tight end for the rest of your time playing dynasty in the league because you're, you're good. You're good. You can pick up guys in the second round of the rookie draft and to be like, hey, if this guy sort of pans out and is a starter, cool. If not, who cares? It, it's kind of the thing like yeah. if, you can, if you can draft like in a single quarterback league, let's just say in the rookie draft, you get a, a good rookie quarterback like Pat Mahomes. You got him in the second round, probably like two, five. You yes. never have to look at quarterback again in the rookie draft for the rest of your time playing in that league. That's the type of guy Kyle Pitts is. And I think he's, he, he's going to change the game. We already see guys like, think about this. In the upcoming NFL draft, Kyle Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame, 6'4", 220 pounds. That's a safety. Safeties and cornerbacks are going to be more desirable to get looked at as guys that are more lengthy and kind of built like guys that can contend with Kyle Pitts. And that's why he's so valuable here. But I think linebackers are going to start slimming down a little bit to keep up the agility and the speed with how good Kyle Pitts can cut as well. So he's, the, when we say generational talent, they impact the game, and that's what he's doing. So a guy like that on your dynasty team, you just don't touch. You leave him there forever. Yeah. <laughs> and you laugh at everybody that drafted somebody else over him. Uh, now let's move on to trade away. Who should you trade away? Well, it's, this is a pretty obvious one. Um, if you can get anything for him, it is, it is old man, journeyman, returner, slash wide receiver jk he's a running back cordero patterson uh he's gonna be 31 before the season even starts but he's fantastic he was like running back eight on the year for a guy that converted running back he's got fresh legs uh, he only had a hundred and what we had 153 rushes and 52 catches so he barely eclipsed 200 total touches yet he was able to have 11 touchdowns uh 1200 yards and here's the thing right now he is still Atlanta's number one running back. Use that. Use his good season. Use, hey, well, he's, he doesn't have a lot of tread on the tires, you know, because he's been a kick returner and a slot receiver uses the number four or five guy. He's got a couple of years left. If you can trade him now, that'd be fantastic. I packaged him in a late 22 first, and I got Christian McCaffrey. And I think I, I, think I ran away with that deal, personally. Oh, yeah. And use recency bias, use fresh legs, use recent, like just use all that and use he's the number one to trade him right now. Yeah, this is, this is definitely striking where the iron's hot. Uh, player, get what you can. Um, and that, that's going to be the, the benefit because he had a good season this year simply because he was plugged in a lot of people didn't know how to how to um plan against him because he was one of the slash players they didn't know if he was going to be in the backfield or the slot or on the edge so this is one of those players that you know you want to strike while the iron's hot make sure you get a good return and reap the benefits thank you for holding on the fort there had a dog going crazy outside um well, yeah i'm i'm really glad that you kept going with that but i think if you can touch a first round pick for him do it if you can use him to move up in the draft do it i would send him 
to a contender for the 2023 first if they'll do it in a heartbeat. I'm talking about a good team, like, like the type of team I have in our league. I would send him to that type of team that is like, oh, absolutely. I'm going to have the 112 next year no matter what because there's a chance they won't and it's going to fall down, but it doesn't matter. That value is going to return for you. Take advantage of the hot streak. Now let's move on to the Carolina Panthers. This is my favorite team, but we hold no bias or anything here on second and short. And we went back and forth. Really, we want to talk about DJ Moore for every category because I think DJ Moore is great value to buy right now because I think if you look at who he's ranked around or is drafted around and you offer that in a trade, almost nine times out of 10, people are going to take Stefan Diggs over DJ Moore. They're, they're going to take a CD lamb over DJ Moore. You know, they're going to take these things. So you need to take advantage of that. But he's the type of guy that we maybe should trade away because he's so consistent. And as soon as he gets a quarterback, you know, that's why you sell him. He's going to get a quarterback soon. He's going to be a 14, 1500 yard receiver. And you could sell him that way. Uh, but he fell in the key. We're not going to talk about that right now. Let's talk about our buy, though. And let's transition with second round, second year uh, wide receiver. That is going to be Terrence Marshall Jr. Now, he didn't really do anything in 2021. Uh, he had 17 catches, 138 yards. He appeared in 13 games. Uh, there was injury throughout the season. I don't think he was fully healthy. I think he had, like, nagging injuries. And it was on a team where the quarterbacks – just weren't very good uh, last year. There was like small, you know, douses of, of, of good quarterback play, but they were spread thin. And I, I think when they were playing their best, he wasn't in. Here's the thing. Robbie Anderson has another year on his deal. DJ Moore has another year before he hits the big, big payday uh, as well. And I think that with the uncertainty of that, you buy Terrence Marshall now, who you drafted at the back end of the first in 2021, or you drafted him at the top of the second. And if you can turn around and buy him now, you'll reap the benefits in 2023. That's where I think the benefit will come. When Robbie Anderson's gone, when they have a new quarterback in there, probably a new head coach, sadly, and you know, depending on how things go. Um, and we don't know if DJ Moore is going to stay. Uh, Terrence Marshall could find himself as the number one receiver on a team that is building itself up. Yeah, and he's going to be one of those plug-and-play guys, I think. Um, and we talk about stocking stocking people for their eventual eventual breakout season. This is a, a player that fits that mold because he has, has had injuries plague. His um, seasons has gave him a pretty, you know, low ceiling. Uh, to break through. So I think that, you know, once you get this Carolina team rolling, he's going to be somebody that's going to reap the benefits, especially Robbie Anderson's out the door. I think that opens that wide receiver two spot mm -hmm. wide open for him to just uh, step in and make an immediate impact. Yeah. And I, he, he's, he's a good talent. Um, we, we have this thing where we happen with guys that are drafted um, at the back end of like rookie drafts of like first and like second rounds. Uh, that we kind of, if they don't produce right away, we, everybody starts fading them a little bit. And yes. I'm telling you right now, I'm in the middle of like negotiations. Like I'm loaded a receiver in this league. So mind this, okay? And I'm just trying to buy a backup tight end. And pretty much I'm in a situation where it's like Terrence Marshall for Logan Thomas is like the value that I'm in. And we're trying to find that extra piece to close the gap between Terrence Marshall and Logan Thomas. And it's not a very big gap based on this guy wanting Terrence Marshall. So that's how low his value is right now is like a 30 year old tight end. That is going to be your tight end two on your team. Plus like a late pick because of that. I think he's very obtainable. He's very cheap. You could probably get him for like, probably you could probably send like a, a, a late second round pick for him this year and probably snag it probably even cheaper. You could probably use it as like, Hey, I have, I have two, one, you have two, seven. Why don't we swap and you give me Terrence Marshall? You might even be able to pull that off this year. So I think it's an easy buy. Now let's talk about Keith. I right, mentioned him earlier, DJ Moore. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Reliable, Mr. Consistent, a.k.a. potentially going to break out as the new Steve Smith. But let's talk about DJ Moore. Uh, yeah, I mean, looking at his numbers, 
Uh, this is this is crazy because he's putting up solid numbers uh, and not getting credit for it, and that is shocking. Carolina has not had the best quarterback play over the past few seasons, but he's still producing it, which and he's targeted right now as like wide receiver thirteen, which is that borderline wide receiver one on a team. Uh-huh. Um, so. You which, know, which he was this year. He was, well, he was, he was in borderline. He was, he was wide receiver 18 on the year is where he was with, with three guys rotating in and starting. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, statistically, I mean, he, he packs that packs that option of a wide receiver one, um, but your people's going to fade him as a, as a mid wide receiver two, but you got to take a look at the quarterback play. This is a guy that I, that I didn't like uh, until this year. Uh, this year, he won me over because I started looking at his game a little bit deeper and seeing that his production is yards after catch, his catch ratio, and I was I was floored because even me, being the you know all knowing that I am, and just um, you know I didn't have him high up on my my draft boards. But statistically, he deserves to be, uh, you know, in that conversation as taking him as a wide receiver one to anchor your team. Yeah, and I, I think the reason well, here's the thing: he's in the keep mode because I think, well, I think he should be in the buy. I'm being honest with you right now because we were talking about this. I already kind of highlighted it. There are guys that he's getting drafted around in like third rounds of startups that I think more people would just trade. Like if, if, if I offered you that deal straight up, you'd be like, absolutely. I'm accepted in no, no time that I think that he should, he's a guy that you could buy pretty well. Cause people, like you said, you don't like him until this year, but all he did this year was everything he did the past two years. Like he's had, he's had in like four years. I think he's had like, I think it's like seven or eight quarterbacks throw to him. I have to go look as, and I know I should know this as a Panthers fan, but we're like running through this, but he's had like seven different guys throw him a ball. Like that's that's crazy to think about, and he's still producing. Now give him like consistency at the quarterback position, and he's gonna to the moon. To the moon. Give Carolina a decent offensive line. He's to the moon. Um, and I don't think you can trade him away and get like good value for him. I think people would undersell it, undercut him, uh, hundred percent because of the quarterback play and and whatnot. Now let's move on to a guy that you should buy, um, or should, should sell away. Sorry, should sell. And that for me is uh, is Chuba Hubbard. And he finishes running back thirty five this year, filling in for Christian McCaffrey. Now here's why I should say I say he should sell him. First of all, he's a fourth round pick, um, which to me is like he doesn't hold a lot of draft capital. Where like Carolina feels like they have to use him. Like the regiment isn't like oh we have to. You know what I mean? And Amir Abdullah kind of stepped in late in the season, and he kind of was producing exactly like Hubbard was. Uh, but with less volume, and I think the fact that we were able to see that from Amir Abdullah, who is not a guy that is like a household, like that's a starting running back. Like that guy's like a kick returner. He's a disappointment from Detroit. Like, oh yeah, okay, he was in Minnesota, but couldn't crack even number two. When you see that right there, that tells me that Hubbard is a guy that I kind of want to get rid of because it shows that Carolina is just kind of willing to use a hot hand if McCaffrey's not there. And Hubbard isn't like the guy. I think the talent is still there. And I think you can use like his college production, his talent, and the fact that he is behind Christian McCaffrey. And Christian McCaffrey might not ever play like, again at the top tier level. You can use that to help sell Hubbard 100%. Now, don't sell him for pick straight up. I think he's a package type guy. Like you pair him with a wide receiver two to get a wide receiver one type deal. Something like that. Like you pair him with Dallas Goddard to, somehow get mark andrews you know what i'm trying to say like something i'm not saying that deal would work but you know what i'm trying to say yeah two for one deal uh, to try to just improve a position mm-hmm. uh especially especially the the owner that you're going to be wanting to target with with him is definitely the the mccaffrey owner um yeah. because they're going to be wanting that insurance policy um and they don't want to scramble so they seen what happens this year when mccaffrey goes if if when McCaffrey goes down. So you want to be playing on their sympathies and their, their depths. So definitely be going for a two for one target. Um, you know, 
a solid wide receiver two, uh, an upper tier wide receiver two, uh, tight end one would mm. be, or or just you know even if you're just going to be upgrading uh, to a um, running back three flex position, uh, definitely target that for in a two for one deal. So yeah, uh, I can get on board with that. Yeah, and if and back to the Amir Abdullah thing, just for reference for everybody, because not everybody watches Carolina Panthers games. Drew Robert played all 17 games last year, and he amassed uh, 37 attempts. Like, that's targets. In those 37 targets, he had 25 catches. Amir Abdullah played six less games than him and had 12 more targets and 10 more catches. Like, he had 12 more targets in six less games. Uh, If if you expand that over a 17-game, he would have had, like, 24 more targets or 22 more targets than the guy that was supposed to be the starting guy after McCaffrey went down. So I'm going to have to remember there. Um, so I, I just, I don't trust enough in Carolina's coaching staff to put the ball in his hands enough. And I think they'll ride the hot hand pending Christian McCaffrey going down. I also don't think McCaffrey's going down. I think he's going to like, I think he's like hit this like rough patch and I think he's going to be just fine. That's just me. I'm a hopeful Panthers fan, but try and sell Chuba Hubbard now before we kind of see the same thing happen and his value goes down, but package him. Now let's talk about the New Orleans Saints, the troublesome New Orleans Saints, man. These guys, I don't, I don't even understand what it is. Like, is salary cap even real? Like, they are always like, yeah. oh, yeah, the New Orleans Saints owe the NFL, like, the, they're negative, they're negative 70 million. And then six months later, yeah, they're playing in week one with, and, you know, they have like, they have like three million cap space. How? How? Where did that money come from? But let's talk about a guy to buy, a guy that you really want to buy, and you don't care if the value is going up right now. You want him. Uh, and I, mine's Tony Jones. Um, that is somebody that I'm buying right now with the, and we'll talk about this a little later, uh, with the trouble coming out of New Orleans and uh, the Pro Bowl. I think this is somebody that you could buy right now um, and hold on to in hopes that uh, stuff goes sideways and you're going to reap the benefits. I might be eating my own words here because a lot of trades I'm seeing are not actually trades that I think are pretty bad, and I think they're really good for him. Um, we're seeing a guy like Tony Jones. His value is all over the place, and I think that he can he potentially step in to be a number one guy for the New Orleans Saints if Alvin Kamara is out and locked up. I just think it's going to happen. Um, and if it does happen, I don't think it's going to happen for like two years. Um, that's what things mostly happen in the NFL. Like, oh yeah, this guy just did something really bad, but he's just playing because like we can't we can't prosecute him to next year type thing. And so buy him at a good value. Don't let anybody oversell or or try and trape you. I'm gonna say that that way it doesn't sound like I'm you know talking about you know, but trape. We're gonna call it trape. Don't get traped when it comes to Tony Jones. Make sure that if you're sending him, if you can get him for like a third round pick, sure. Do it. That's a that's a fair value. I take a guy like that, but do not fall into this hole, this trap where you have to send an arm and a leg to get the guy because he's the next Saints starting running back. Don't fall into that. Use the well. Kamara's still probably going to play to your advantage and get him very cheap because he's a nice little security blanket. Because if he does become the starter, the value is going to triple or or more. Yeah, and you also got to think they they brought Mark Ingram in as well. So you still got Mark Ingram in that backfield, which no, he's got a few miles on him, but he's familiar with the offense. Um, so you, you're going to see that timeshare even if something happens with Kamara. Uh, Mark Ingram's going to step in and steal steal some touches and stuff because of the familiarity and you know the comfort zone level that he has. So this is a good time to try to buy Tony Jones, hold on to him, stash, hope for the best in your league, not necessarily that Kamar goes to jail, but hope hope that the stash pays off uh, because he's a, he's a player that will not make an impact this year. I will say that, go on record, not make an impact 2022, 2023, is going to be his breakout season. Yeah, this is one of those things where you're trying to play chess when everybody else is playing checkers and trying to catch somebody sleeping 
uh, during a, tra- a trade where you can, you know, you can seek value later on. And I think that's a very, a very fair thing here. Instead of us like trying to always like all of our buys out, outside of Mike Evans are all guys that are like kind of sneaky that could have more potential upside. And I really like that during the off season to kind of like how well, how well can you turn your bench? Because I think turning your bench in dynasty is very important to establishing uh, depth and being a contender. And it's a good way to flip assets for better starters down the line. If you can like manage a good, a good uh, bench, the second guy you're going to keep, you're going to keep Michael Thomas, no matter what. Uh, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to trade him because who's going to give you anything for Michael Thomas. Uh, you're not going to go out and buy him because why would you want to spend a lot of money on Michael Thomas? But you are going to keep him. And the reason why you're going to keep him is because this is a guy that had 4,000 yard seasons in a row. Yes. He had drew Brees. Yes. You know, he broke a record and then he went down and got hurt. But here's the thing. He's going to be so fresh coming back. The saints are in such terrible cap space. One of two things happens. He stays in New Orleans where he is the number one guy, no matter what, because they restructure and he's there or they trade him somewhere else. And he's away from Taysom Hill and whoever else is playing quarterback in New Orleans and his quarterback play upgrades. Now, even with Taysom Hill, he's a guy that I think is a wide receiver to um, to wide receiver, probably like range, probably like 15 to this is a big range. I'm gonna say like 15 to like 25. He could anywhere in that range just because Jason Hill is so all over the place. I'm, I'm just saying that's who the starting quarterback is. It's probably going to be like Kenny Pickett is who's probably going to be the starting quarterback. Um, but in that case, I'm just saying either way, he's the number one or he gets traded somewhere with a cap space and he's the number two. Like, let's just say, let's just spitball this out. And if this happens, I'm going to say it first. I haven't heard anywhere. Mike Williams is on his way out into free agency. The, the Chargers are like number two or number three in cap space. Let's just say they bought and traded for Mike Thomas, and now he has Herbert throwing to him with Keenan Allen on the opposite side. Doesn't that sound juicy? That sounds really good, doesn't it? If that happens, his value keeps going up, and then you can trade him. But right now, as he is with the New Orleans Saints, you keep him, you take what you can uh, production-wise, and you just roll with it. Uh, I'm I'm going to throw another juicy clip out there because – a team that's lacking a true wide receiver one that has a quarterback that's being slept on. Michael Thomas going to the Las Vegas Raiders. There you go. Um, so, and then you have him on the outside. You have Waller and you have Renfro. Uh, they're with Derek Carr because they've committed to Derek Carr. So, New Orleans, ideally, uh, there's some animosity with Mike Thomas in the front office. Mm-hmm. That's uh, so. I look for him to be on the way out, but it's no matter where he lands, he's going to be an upgrade. Um, I could see him going to somewhere like New England. I could see him going to the Jets. I could see him going to the Raiders. Exactly. Um, I think those three teams, you know, would be a good fit for him. He would be an upgrade at any of those spots. Now let's move on to our final category here. And let's talk about the person you should trade away from the New Orleans Saints. That is Alvin Kamara. Give us your reason. Uh, legal issues, because uh, with the uh, Vince as a Pro Bowl, I think a lot of people's ha- are, are mixed bags. A lot of people was being hopeful. A lot of people wanted to dump him to give value. So I think this is, a, is one of those rare instances where you could trade him and get a decent core value for him. So I think right now is a good time to shop him around. Uh, and with uh, a dynasty owner, that is one piece of way that is helpful to get a, a running back to push him over the edge. Talk to a contender. See if you can get like, uh, if you can get like too late first, let's just, cause he's still legal system. We don't know and everything, but if you can get like one eight, one nine plus a 23 first, I think that's a fair deal to do. Um, he's, he's getting, he's 26 now. So, I mean, it's already fair to kind of move in that direction anyways. So he'll be 27 when the season starts. So I think that's a good time to kind of flip many ways. And just like use use the thing of like, oh, I don't think he's in, he's fine. Like guys have been way worse and they keep playing. Use that as your favor. Um, I, I don't know if I would trade him away, but that's because I've never owned Alvin Kamara. So I can't give a, on a say in this. He could be a keep, he could be a buy right now. Um, but if you can get two first for him at this value, I think it would be good to get out of it at this time. Uh, just for, you know, 
just 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 for team morale for your dynasty team morale to just have some you know good-hearted law-abiding citizens that don't beat up people provoked or unprovoked whatever um and with all that being said that is it for our show make sure you guys follow us on instagram facebook twitter tiktok content is going to start flowing out now also we are now partners with the w2m network and you can check us out over there as, as well as many other podcasts and, and videos and everything that they got going down. And if you want to hear more from Jason, you can hear his voice when he talks about movies and such on. Uh, yeah, you can find me on the triple feature. We just did a Super Bowl recap of American Underdog. We are Marshall and National Champions nice. uh, that wrapped up after the Super Bowl. Uh, me and the Patriarch Mark Bradley over there. We're uh, right in the middle of our Black History Month, we got an upcoming Spike Lee retrospective dropping this Sunday. So yeah, pop over there, hear my take on some movies. Uh, if you want to see a different side of me than, you know, the guru of fantasy football. And if you want to see more from me, I talk about MTV's The Show, The Challenge, reality-based competition show, featuring reality stars, competing for lots of money. Fun little drama show. I talk about that with MTV Malik and Giftmaster Bex over at love war challenges podcast and sorry i stepped away so much crazy time going on right now dogs are barking like crazy but jason held down the fort be sure to tune in subscribe and follow here on youtube because we have a 32 team series on what teams should be doing in the off season that i'll be breaking down each team individually coming soon starting next week all that being said thanks for listening and you guys enjoy the off season <laughs>